long way from home. That's right, about 500 miles, 550 miles. Uh, what's this airplane called? This car, uh, air, airplane is called an Acrolyte, and the model is a Model 1T. Now, the Acrolyte, when I first saw it, only had uh, two wings. This one here's got three. Yeah, well, the original Acrolyte was the 1B, the one over here. This is the one that uh, won the aircraft spruce and specialty design contest in 1996. Talk a little bit about that. How did you uh, get involved in that? Well, Aircraft Spruce was advertising a, um, a design contest for scratch-built airplanes because they wanted to sell, you know, kits and parts. And uh, I entered it, and out of 101 em uh, entries, I, I managed to win it. Now, it wasn't just a matter of winning it, though. You got the, you also had to uh, build an airplane. Yeah, well, what Aircraft Spruce did was, uh, like, after they so selected, they actually selected three aircraft to, 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 ha to build. One of the fellas dropped out right away. The other fella last time I talked to him about a year ago still had parts scattered all over and that was almost, that's almost eight or nine years ago now and uh, we built this one here we built this one here in, in a little less than a year to, to get it ready for to fly into the into Oshkosh. Now are these basic airplanes using the same type of construction? Yes yes all, all of the airplanes are the same there's four different models Okay, let's uh, just start with the, the is there a, a difference in the basic model or how do we start with the first model? Well, uh, this is the first one here, and uh, and uh, it's a steel tube fuselage, fabric covered. The, the tail is aluminum tube uh, with uh, gusset plates, aluminum gusset plates, blind, blind riveted. Um, this this airplane here um, has a wooden wing. Uh, There's a conventional wooden wing box bar construction. So we've got a, a welded 4130 Crawley fuselage. Yep. And then uh, we're covering it with standard aircraft type uh, fabric covering. Yep. Yeah. Po uh, poly fiber covering, the lightest fabric they have. Now, what type of uh, wings are we using? Wood rim uh, uh, ribs in it as well? Yes. And this one here, there's built up uh, three eight square spruce uh, ribs. And what about the spars? Uh, the spars are are a uh, wood squares, about an inch and an eighth by inch and an eighth square, with plywoods on each side. So it's a box spar. That's why we. That's the way we get away with just one strut and one interplane strut, is because all of the torsion load in the wing is taken up by the full sheeting in the box spar. Okay, now the average guy, what would he need if he were to buy a set of plans? And I believe that's what you're selling him as his plans now. The the Acrolyte One B, because aircraft. A Spruce sponsored it. They have the marketing rights to the plants. So for that model, you have to go to Aircraft Spruce for the plants. Okay. Now, if someone were to buy that set of plants from Aircraft Spruce, what kind of building times would they be looking at? Well, you know, it's pretty much like any other home-built airplane. Uh, it's about a three-year project if you work on it two hours a day for for three years. And and that's what I tell just about everybody. You just got to grit down and. Get out in the shop every day for a couple hours and and do it, and you'll have a nice airplane after three years. So you're looking at between fifteen hundred and two thousand hours to build it. Yeah, plan? yeah, that's what you're looking at. And if you can get a friend to help, hey, it's way way faster. Now, are there any special tools or knowledge that somebody's going to need in order to finish the airplane up? Well, uh, there's nothing special about these airplanes. They're the conventional way they're built, same as they've been since the 1930s. So there's no really any. You're going to have to learn how to uh, uh, weld chrome molly, but there's lots of people now that can, can MIG weld really, really well, and MIG welding works. So you can oxyacetylene weld it, or if you've got lots of patience and time, you can TIG weld it. But that's about the only skill that's really hard to learn. The rest of it is just the same as building cabinets, I guess. Now, we move from that into some of the other models. What's the next model up there? Well, the next model after this one here was, uh, was the Model 1C, and it, it used the um, aluminum wing, with a, a box aluminum spar, and um, see this one here has the 912 in it, and the other, and, and it used an eight-foot wing instead of the, these wings panels are nine feet on the biplane, and uh, so we cut down on the wing area because there was a lot of trim drag on these on these air on this the original one we built. Now the original was it has it been powered by 912 since day one? Yes. Okay. And what kind of performance would you be getting out of that? That's got to be a fast little airplane. Yeah, well, when I, the first time I flew it down to Oshkosh, I cruised at 110 at 5,500 RPM. And what would the stall speed come in at? All the, all the airplanes stall at less than 45. Now, again, you're using the, standard uh, aircraft uh, stick and rudder type of controls on it? Yeah, they're just standard airplanes. Any flaps or anything like no. that on the, the reason we ha they all stall at 45 and less is because under Canadian ultralight rules, if the airplane will stall at less than 45, you can fly it with a with an ultralight 
pilot license, and that was one of our goals. We wanted people with just a simple ultralight license to be able to fly a really decently performing airplane. So we've gone from a wood wing, and then we went to an aluminum wing, and what's the third stage then? Well, the third stage is this one here. This one here is a fiberglass wing. It uses a, a much the same construction internally, but it uses a fiberglass sheet to glue on the top instead of the plywood and fabric covering or aluminum. And uh, if you do it right, you get a really, really smooth finish. Very thin wing, too, airfoil. Yeah, that's 12% thick, but it's only 2 feet by 8 feet. So it's, it's not like you'd need a lot of room to build something like this. Now, why the third wing? Well, it's, it's, there's quite a big story to that. When, when we, after we built the two models of the biplane, we wanted to build a carbon fiber wing. To, you know, to really see if we could get and, and a much more higher performance airplane. So we started experimenting with, with different wing types. And along the way, I guess, I don't know how, how it all happened, but we thought, well, if we're going to build a little simple fiberglass or carbon fiber wing, we might as well build it so we can use it. So kind of thought, well, heck, a triplane, that would be neat. Nobody's built a triplane since 1920. <laughs> A new design triplane that is, and uh, it might be kind of fun. I did quite a bit of research on triplanes, and I, most of the research I found from the pilots that flew them, mostly in World War One, was that they really, really liked it. The Sopwith triplane and the Fokker DR1, all the guys that flew them loved them. I didn't, I didn't want to build a pseudo copy of a triplane. I, you know, a, another World War One replica. I wanted a new design, a sport triplane, something that that used all modern technology and, and all the all the new what people know about aerodynamics, and uh, and it works. This this thing just scoots along and climbs like you wouldn't believe. Okay, now we're powering this for the 582. Yeah, 65 force. Okay, now again, we've got a stall speed of less than 45 miles an hour. What kind of cruise speed we got? Here? Depend, well, it depends how hard you want to run the engine. If you run the engine where Rotax says its maximum speed is, it'll, it'll, it'll cruise at 100 miles an hour. But uh, I cut it back to try to burn a little less fuel because these two strokes, when you run them pretty hard, they burn fuel like crazy. But uh, I flew this airplane down here to Oshkosh. I flew it at 5,600 RPM. It, it did 85 mile an hour and it burned 3.8 gallons of fuel an hour. So, 582, that's phenomenal. So you can't do better than that. Now again, we're still using uh, standard stick and uh, rudder controls on this? Yeah, they're all, and they're the controls are very harmonious. They're not like a lot of airplanes where you got, you know, stiff pitch or light ailerons or heavy ailerons and light pitch. Everything is balanced. It's, it's really nice to fly because it's, it, it feels so good. Now, this is a little unique, and this is the first time I've ever seen an aileron in the middle wing. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we pondered on that, what we should do, and, um, you know, we thought about putting three small ailerons on but then the linkage is a nightmare especially inside of the cockpit where you got to get everything to work it so I thought well you know I'm these will wings are really easy to build I'll take a chance and put the aileron just on the middle wing and make a little bit wider one you can see it's two inches wider than the biplane ones and uh, see if it works and by golly did it ever work <laughs> it turns like you wouldn't believe it the roll rate is a little bit slower than the biplanes to, to, to get it rolling initially. But once it starts to roll, and then when you haul back in the stick, that thing just goes around like, like you could turn it around in your living room almost. Now, are you offering this then, or how is this airplane going to get to market? Well, all I'm offering plans, just the plans, that's all. Uh, you get the plans, you get an instruction book, and you get a CD with all of the digital pictures that we took when we built this airplane. We took pictures of everything to try to help you know, the biggest problem with guys when they're building something from plans is, you know, how the heck does this really look? How, you know, how does it look in the real world? And we got a CD with about 400, 500 pictures on it, and people can just load it into their computer, print it out, and say, hey, this is, this is how it looks. Now, what about the, uh, the drawings? Are they like a full scale, or how are they cut the drawings for the jigs and stuff that have to be done? The, there's, um, there's 12, 24 by 36 drawings. And the last two drawings are full-size templates. There's full-size templates for the ribs, the instrument panel, all of the fittings, all of the tail brackets. Everything has a that's you can fit in a 24 by 36 piece of paper, uh, a full-sale drawing. Just either glue them on the material or glue them on a piece of poster board for a pattern and whack it out with a bandsaw. Now, what about the, the wing construction? You mentioned it's a composite. What type of problems is that going to be for the, the builder? Well. To do it the way we did this one here, I didn't recommend it. 
um, but um, you can cover this airplane with flywood if you like and, and cover it with, with fabric. But we did this with fiberglass to get it as smooth as what it is. So, so what the builder would do is he'd make a normal wing, wing structure, you know, built up. These are plywood ribs and a box bar wing. And you'd use a, a wooden leading edge notched out. And then you'd make these, these panels on a piece of, of, uh, of uh, ar ar arborite, like they use for kitchen cupboards. And, they, and the fiberglass won't stick to it. So you'd, you'd make that, lay it all up trim it as soon as it just nicely starts to harden up trim it and then glue it lay it right on top and glue it done fast and easy time wise is it longer to do that type than a wood wing or would it shorter i think it's shorter especially since the the ribs are are very small very short we cut them out three or four at a time in a rotor you use a the jig on a rudder you can cut all of these ribs out in uh, in half a day if somebody wanted to get more information how did they get a hold of you well, uh, the best thing to do is to check us on the internet. We're at www.acrolite.org, and all the information is there.